Alrighty race fans, welcome to another edition of the Workbench. Well today we're going to talk about pickup shoes. In particular, uh, the new low travel shoe that we have out from uh, Harden Creek Slot Cars. And there's a little sample of them right here. And they're made out of a very high quality electrical grade copper. It's not just, you know, like a copper penny, it's a special alloy just for the application. So, they're really nice shoes. Now, the description that you see will say low travel. Some of you probably know what that is, others of you don't. Um, one of the phenomenons that you get with slot cars, HOs in particular, is how much shoe travel is available to you. And if you don't have enough, that's terrible. If you have too much, that can also be sort of terrible. So you don't want a lot of extra shoe bouncing around underneath your car. So in general, we'll take this little version of a Viper G-Jet that I prepared for a customer, and we'll put it on a tech block there and one of the things that that we do here is if you look right up here watch these the fronts of the shoes when I move the car back and forth okay you see that the shoes actually don't move the car moves a little bit but the shoes don't move what's happening is the shoe is compressing and as you can see we've got good rail contact the springs right under here the shoe compresses all the way and unloads off the hanger well then when the car goes the shoe goes towards the back of the hanger there's a contact point on the back of the hanger where it contacts that as well as the spring that comes through and goes to the, sh the top of the hanger there so you've got two paths of electricity the problem that you have if you have a ski shoe that has a really long travel design and we'll talk somewhat about that is this hook gets too long and you've got a lot of um, extra space under there and sometimes the shoe actually will not compress as far as it should and float and then that affects handling so how do you determine the proper use between uh, low travel, standard travel, and say, you know, long or extra long travel. Well, my experience says that front tires that are around 340, okay, our little magic tire gauge, anything 340 or below, the cars can run low shoes. Anything, say, 340 and up to a point can run standard travel shoes. Um, and when you get in some really big sizes, you need long travel shoes, and we'll talk some more about that. But this particular car has got a front tire size of about 330. It falls through the 335 and whatever, so it's about 330. Um, this particular Viper V-Spec, uh, this one's more right around the 340 area. Okay, so put it on our little tech block, move the car back and forth, you see 340, the shoes, watch up in there, you see the shoes, how they move or don't move, so the, the shoes are unloading properly and this is a 340 tire size. Uh, and I believe on this particular example, those are also low shoes. Once you get up into, you know, something that's maybe in the 355, 360, you might want to start running, you know, like a standard travel shoe from Viper or BSRT, something in that area. When you get into really large stuff, these fat tire fronts that are like, say, 385, let's see, 3, yeah, 385, you need a long travel shoe, okay, most of the time, what happens then is you end up with one of these stepped shoes okay that the way it's designed it doesn't unload it hinges at this point here so you don't get any unloading off the shoe 
Alright, you have to excuse the break there. We had a dead battery. Had to get a new one put in. Alright, so we talked about low shoes. When you get larger tires up into, say, the 385 area, you need you need long travel shoes. And right now the only setups that are really available right now are these stepped shoes that are kind of the old Tommy Super G Plus style. Um, they do not unload off of the hanger. Okay, they, they cantilever off the hanger and it's actually a pretty fair design because the way it works it, it you, you always get some measure of contact at some point. The car will always run when you put these kinds of shoes on them but um, they, uh, they, don't, they don't unload as you can see when you're moving the car back and forth. You know, it's possible here one day we might get some long travel shoes designed for you know, a car like this, but you know, it takes time. The, um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, that's a couple more things, but one of them is it's really difficult to get this stuff made exactly to print. All right? Anybody that tells you that they can Sometimes I think it's more luck, uh, and this doesn't make any difference if the stuff's made over here, overseas. Um, it's it's really about the people at the company understanding what needs to be done, the people running the machinery, making the progressive form dies that they care, um, pride in the work, all that. That's really what makes this stuff come out good or if it's the lack thereof you know yeah your part kinda looks like it's to print right you know and if it has a plus or minus uh, specification of say two thousandths or whatever and one of these little areas is out a couple of thousands but it's causing some problems well you know guess what you know you just got yourself a bucket full of parts they don't care it's gotta be really bad before they'll rerun the part that's just what I found but anyway, we've got uh, some new shoes here that came in. Um, these are made out of a very high grade uh, copper that's uh, the alloy is designed f uh, specifically for uh, electrical contacts and things like that that um, you know require you know, a high quality surface. So this particular car here, <clears throat> this is a G Jet. I built a couple of them for a customer and tried the new low shoes on them and as you can see when you know we kind of move the car around in the light a little bit there's absolutely a perfect front to rear contact patch okay um, just you know you gotta kinda wait and see the, the light kinda glinting on it to see that that wear pattern but that's perfect that's the whole idea behind the shoe um, Sometimes you get shoes where there's a slight belly in the shoe and you get some contact on the back and the front when they're new. Now, once this heel kind of wears in a little bit with the rail, this contact patch will, uh, you know, go on ahead and go all the way front to back. Um, this can be tweaked a little bit. There's a uh, a tool that some people either come up on their own or they make them. I mean, whatever the case is, it's a little something that's got kind of a little slot in there. And you can go in and you can kind of give this thing a little bit of a bend sometimes. Now the T-Jet guys are well aware of this problem. Right? I'm, I'm preaching to the choir when I'm talking to these guys running freight cars. They'll spend hours getting their shoes sanded flat, tweaked up. I mean, it's just, it's, it's incredible the amount of work those guys put into pickup shoes. But with the magnet cars, because we've got magnets, um, the cars are relatively fast, you know, finding just little, little bitty extra bits of speed isn't quite as important maybe as a car handling at high speed. The fray guys and whatever, I mean, just, you know, some of these races are won by 
you know, a car length or something, or whatever, just inches sometimes. So any little advantage is, is incredible. So they, they spend lots of time on every aspect of their car, the gear mesh, you know, pickup shoe, pickup shoe tension, how they're tweaked. It's just, it's, it's just absolutely incredible what goes into that. Um, but not so much in the Magna car world. I mean, you get, you get at the, 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 the highest end of it. Yes, they, they take a lot of it real seriously, but for the most part, for you know the 98 percent of the guys that are you know supporting the hobby that are just running in their basement or hobby room man cave or whatever they're not into serious club racing and believe it or not it's the market's about 98 percent that the pro racer is a very small percentage believe it or not um i've come to see that over the last you know 15 years of business and we can have that side discussion if you so like to call me on the phone anyway uh, so that the issue of a pickup shoe being slightly bellied or whatever, it, most guys aren't aren't concerned about that. But these new shoes that we've got, we got fortunate. I'm not going to say that the people that made these are all that in a bag of chips, but this production run of shoes, they are they are perfect. Now, a lot of guys, this is I think more of the more important discussion here is how to properly put shoes on okay now a lot of guys will take and pull shoes off they'll pick them off the front or whatever when you do that when you try to pick these shoes off the front uh, and especially low travel shoes it tends to tweak the shoe out so I resist trying to pull these things off the front what I do I get a pair of tweezers and I come down here and kind of just get underneath the heel hook okay and pop the shoe off I mean I've been doing this a long time so it's real easy now these particular shoes on this platform um, and also you know this would apply to Tommy Turbo uh, SRT Super G Plus including the new Super 7 chassis the way this shoe tab hanger tab is uh, made there's a slight uh, angle on that and with these shoes here you can hook them in the back and then simply press them over the front because that guide way allows you to do that okay so when you're trying to make a lot of stuff real fast like they did back in the day with those Tommy cars it aided in the speed of production these ski shoes like this you can't do that okay here again you know you fish them off like that but the way you put these things on right and this this applies to say a BSRT that even though it doesn't have a bumper I get something like a tweezer, grab that shoe, and fish it through the front and get that front tab through the window of the shoe, and then get my tweezers or whatever and just kind of poke down on that thing and it'll pop into the hanger. And that way the shoe, the integrity of the shoe, you're not stressing it trying to bend something there where you, you, you artificially, in other words, you have a perfectly flat shoe and then you put it on in a stupid manner and now you got a belly. It defeats the purpose of the part. Okay, so once again, take a quick look. You don't do this, just kind of get something to pop that off. And then, you know, I don't have, you know, my ham hands, I, I don't have enough dexterity anymore to do it barehanded. So I, I live with tweezers, just fish it through the front and then get your thing you might hold once it's in there you might hold that down with a finger you know kind of hold that in place I know you can't see that with the camera but you know you might hold this in place with your finger and then get your manipulator and, and get it underneath the shoe hanger so anyway that's that's really I think more of the major point of the video is to introduce this shoe and cover its intended application which is on obviously an in bell style car that's running 
front tires 0 .340 inches or lower. Okay, if you've got bigger front tires, sure, you can put the shoes on the car, but they won't unload and you'll end up just riding on the toe of the shoe and it defeats the entire purpose of having the shoe. Okay, so that's why you have these tools like the tire gauge and all this other stuff so you can figure this out as to what the right parts is for your application. So 340 and below, low travel shoes. 340 and up, let's just pick a number, let's say 365 or 370, somewhere in that area. Standard travel shoes, and if you got big fat tires like what's on Super 7 SC, typical stock Super G Plus, Turbo SRT, anything like that, that's got you know a tire size of 385, you're probably going to have to use these stepped shoes, okay? And then within that, once you run the car around a little bit, you know, you'll see with these with the step shoes if you're riding on the heel or the toe and then you would get some some kind of special manipulation tool either and I don't know if wizard sells one or not but if not you could take even like a screwdriver I've seen people take a, a small screwdriver whack the end off and then put a slit in the end and use that as their tweaking tool and then if it's let's say it's riding on the heel too much then we need to bend the shoe down this way now that may actually take pulling the shoe off and holding this area in a pair of nose pliers and then bending that back but let's just say it's running toe heavy okay you can put your manipulator in here and then kind of you know kind of what would be clockwise yeah clockwise and kind of put some pressure on it that way and this hinge point right here you would bring the heel down okay and you can if you have a tech block you can look at it and one of the purposes of these tech blocks it's got a little hole in the bottom okay and you can look and see in this hole you know how the pad of the shoe is running if it's running you know heel heavy or toe heavy you can sit there and get your shoes tweaked and get pretty close run it around the track and then read the tea leaves when you pull it off you can basically see the wear pattern um, in it so and if you've got um, you know problems figuring that out and you need to buff it up we'll get some kind of little you know shoe buffer whatever and you know buff out the old wear pattern run it again you know and check it and if you can get your shoes riding perfectly flat where you've got no matter if it's a a ski style shoe or a step shoe if you can get a wear pattern front to back you've got the most electrical contact and then your car has the highest chance of running well and this would apply to any HO slot car you know Tyco 440 you know, anything like that all these cars have the ability to have their shoes tweaked but you once you understand what needs to be done then you analyze the platform you're working with and you can make the tweaks but so again nice new shoes low travel from Harden Creek slot cars, um, just absolutely perfect wear patterns. I'm just ecstatic that they came out right. So we got plenty. We're not going to run out anytime soon. So they're in the web cart. They're on eBay. I appreciate it if you buy them off the web cart. And if you want to buy buckets of them, so to speak, that you don't see quantities on the web cart, reach out to me directly. You know, I can come up with you know a special quantity that you want, and you know some price that you know you can afford on that so that's that's certainly available too if you think you're going to be using that many shoes so anyway thanks for listening we appreciate your business uh, and see you again on the next one